You could never take a sledgehammer to creatures such as these. But this is more than just gorgeousness restyled. More than a fine line minutely redrawn. More than a nose job. A tug. A snip. These began life as hewn blocks of the finest marble and an order. Start again. Sculpt from scratch. Lose the kinetics. Curse to Urs. A new world of energy recovery systems, V6 engines, powertrains, turbocharged. Turbo is back. New aerodynamics, harder tires, less fuel. A world of difference. And no time left to tinker. This is it. The goddesses of speed stand upon the start. Welcome to the revolution. Welcome to Formula One. It's a new era of racing, no equal cars, all their year's performances. It's going to be interesting, it's had mixed opinions, but they've now changed and we can't wait to get on the way. Hello, welcome to the first ever race of IF1C, the brand new and interesting F1 League. I'm Josh Total, along with my good friend Milton Hamlin. How are you? Hi, hi. It's a new era of league racing, definitely. No equals, 2014 levels. How's that going to pan out, do you think? Well, it's going to give everyone interesting ways of going about their races because you'll have the Mercedes, which are clearly the quickest cars, and the likes of the Lotuses, which aren't so quick. But, of course, because of that, there's an interesting way of how the contracts are judged. It's based on how hard the drivers work the season, and that is going to be a key player for future ways of getting into the top teams and future seasons of IF1C. Yes, definitely. Now, the social races of this league, they've been quite interesting. I mean, a lot of people have been speculating with Josie Willows and Michael Moron being at the team. They would probably be dominating the season, but it hasn't been like that in the social races. It's actually been the McLarens that have been looking quick. Yeah, again, Mercedes power could be down to that, but, you know, it has been interesting to see a team other than Mercedes be good in, you know, the likes of the social races. But, of course, those are one thing. The actual season is another. Exactly. Mercedes have been considered to be the favourites of this, but I wonder if the plans are going to be changing now. Who knows? Uh, it'll find out here at this fantastic track at Melbourne, a good track to open the season. What's your um, memories of this track? Oh, I love Melbourne myself. It's a brilliant circuit. Of course, the street circuit built around Albert Park Lake in Australia. Now, this has held the Australian Grand Prix all the way back since 1996 when it replaced Adelaide. It's a brilliant circuit. Lots of overtaken opportunities and two DRS zones for 2014. Exactly. And with some uh, specifications on the F1 2014 cars like the turbos and a lot of understeer that the cars are generating now, this could be a quite an interesting championship. It could be, and especially at a track like this, it might need mean that the teams have to run extra downforce because of the understeer that it, the cars generate to try and counteract that. But, you know, we'll have to see what happens in the race. Yeah, indeed, definitely. Now, they've already taken part in the qualifying session, so uh, it's time to have a look at the qualifying report.
It was a mixture of shock, excitement and tension in qualifying, a lot of heartbreak as well, especially for a couple of drivers, especially Ways Cuba, Michael Moron and Ollie Glazebrook. They struggled in qualifying, especially Ollie Glazebrook. He could only manage 9th in the Williams, whereas Ways Cuba could only manage 12th in the Ferrari. Whereas, on the other hand, Michael Moran in the Mercedes could only manage 7th, all three of them struggling in Australia. It was interesting in the top 3, Alan Mune set an early time to take pole position in the session, but made the early mistake of ending his session early. That cost him, and he dropped 2 positions after that, dropping him down to 3rd. He's probably wishing right now he didn't do that. Matt Orange then took pole later on in the session, and they all thought he was going to be a McLaren front row. But Josie Willows came out with a blistering lap out of nowhere, and took pole position to, for the first time in the IF1C, the first pole position. He was extremely happy and absolutely shocked as he didn't expect to take pole position, but somehow he managed to pull out a lap in the bag, and he did it. The Australian Grand Prix circuit, Albert Park Merwin in Australia, 5.303 kilometres, that is 3.295 miles. It has a capacity of 80,000 people turning up at the event every single year and it doesn't fail to impress. It's always been known as the season opener and it's here to kick off the brand new league. With 16 turns, 15 laps of action, we should have a very interesting race. This first opened back in 1953, but got reopened again in 1996. So, here is Milton Hamlin to give you a lap of the great Albert Park circuit. So here we are in Australia and worth for the pole that with Joseph Willows of Mercedes is race into turn one, takes it in fourth gear, 180 kilometers an hour, into turn two, the fast left-hander, and then belting down this mini straight here into turn three, the right hand, followed by turn four, the left-hander breaks now into third gear, into second gear, 100 kilometers an hour, and then the left-hander directly after it is a third gear, 160 kilometers an hour corner, then the flat right here, up through the gears, as he comes to the end of sector one, goes purple here, with a whole 0.167 faster, 0.2 up on his best as he comes through this complex here. Into the right left, which can catch you out if you're not careful. Almost in eighth gear again as he breaks down for it. Now it's a third gear corner, 140 kilometers an hour almost, as he accelerates once again. Now there's a fast left, fast left right complex coming up, can catch you out again. It's very complicated this, and it's got people out. Don't catch the escape road. It's gone through here. Again, takes it in seventh gear. Oh, well, he does catch his skateboard slightly. And then it's a right-hand corner coming up through this fast right into another right. As he keeps the throttle firmly down. Fourth gear, third gear, 160 kilometers an hour through here. And now he goes for another right-hand corner. Turns it in nicely. And there's two to go. First, the final left-hander with shifting down the gears at the second, 100 kilometers an hour. Bit of throttle here. Watch there through here. Easy to get the overseer going. Fourth gear. And then he comes through the gears once more. In the fifth, the RS open at sixth gear. In the seventh gear, and he crosses the line 200 and 300 kilometers an hour. And that's pole position here in Australia. It was an interesting qualifying indeed, but here is the grid. Jersey Willows takes the first ever pole of IF1C and gets the first pole to go on the pole position trophy. He was 0.194 seconds faster than Matt Orange, who was second in the McLaren. Alan Mune's mistake in the other McLaren by ending the session early means that he starts third alongside James Head in the Williams. Matthew Redmore is an impressive fifth in the Force India, with Matthew Tatani sixth in the Ferrari. Michael Moran is a disappointed seventh in the other Mercedes, while Connor Smith is a disappointing eighth in the Red Bull. Ollie Glazebrook disappointed in ninth, out qualified well off by his teammate. Bobby Hunter is 10th, also behind his teammate. Joshua Anderson is 11th in the Force India, with Waze Cuba in 12th. And at the back, we have Jake Walmsley in 13th and Conan Welsh 14th. The two drivers that did not start was the Lotus of Callum Mills and the Toro Rosso of Josh Stronach. So there is the grid. Quite interesting, but it could be a little bit predictable. Josie Willows on the pole position. And uh, I, I don't even know where that lap from Joseph really came from, really, because I think he was expecting the McLarens to be on pole. Yeah, I mean, after the social races where the McLarens dominated, you know, to have a Mercedes on pole, it's, well, I'd say it's a refreshing sight, but we've seen it all too much in real life Formula 1, so yeah. <laughs> but, you know, to have him there in pole position, it's going to be a massive advantage for Mercedes, but anything happens in the race. And it usually does, in the words of Murray Walker. But it wasn't all 
brilliant for uh, Mercedes. Michael Warren only managing seventh, but there was also some other disappointments apart from him. With Connor Smith only managing eighth in the Red Bull, Ollie Glazebrook ninth in the Williams, Bobby Hunter tenth in the Red Bull, Wace Cuba twelfth in the Ferrari. Those guys are going to have to make some serious comebacks today if they want to salvage something. They're going to have to get the foot down, yeah. I mean, I mean, when you say there's disappointments, there's also some serious shocks we saw. Matthew Redmore, fifth in the Four Senior, for instance. That's a fantastic result for him, and he's going to want to capitalise on that come the race. Exactly. Even Joshua Anderson were close to getting into the top ten. Yeah, he was, uh, we've seen how good he is at IF3C as well, so can he transfer that success to IF1C? Only time will tell. Exactly. Um, so... Final predictions, who do you think will end up getting the top spot? Well, with a grid like this, it varies. It's always hard to predict myself, but I personally think it's... You know what? I'm going to say Matt Orange. I think it could be Orange. He's shown he's good in the likes of IF3C. I think he could probably shock the world here by taking a win. Exactly. Uh, I'm going to say... I think I'm going to say Joseph Willows on this one, because... He's good at defending, and uh, who knows? He could be good at defending at the start from Matt Orange because he knows he's good at his starts, but unless he can defend into turn one, he shouldn't have any problems. That's our predictions, but only time will tell because it's time to go to the race. So, here we go, then. Here at Albert Park, Melbourne, in Australia. 15 laps of action. It's Josh Total and Milton Hamlin here. And, of course, we've got a great race in store. Joseph Willows on the pole position. Matt Orange in second position. And then Mike, we have Michael Warren in seventh. For Alan Mune is in third position. So, today, we have views from the Mercedes of Joseph Willows, the number 97 Mercedes. And we also have views from Matt Orange, Matthew Redmore, Matthew Titani and Ollie Glazebrook. So, one light, two lights, three lights, four lights, five lights, and the new era of racing is go, go, go! A good start from Joseph Willows. Matt Owens trying to keep up with him in the McLaren. Can he get the position? Has he done enough? He's taken the lead from Joseph Willows. Fantastic start from Matt Orange. And now James Head side by side with Joseph Willows as well. Can James Head take second place? He's absolutely had a great start from fourth on the grid. Down inside into turn three. Has he got a bit of contact? But James Head up into second position. And now Tatani's having a look at Joseph Willows as well. But now he's been there's been a little bit of argy bargy with him and Matthew Redmore. He's having a look at Joseph Willows. But Redmore has to stay tucked behind Joseph Willows now. Now Glazebrook's behind him. And a bit of a tap. But Glazebrook is lucky. He didn't shove him off the track there. So that's taken Matthew Tatani down to seventh. And here's a replay of the start from Matthew Redmore. Yeah, he's seemed to get the best start of everyone. I mean, look how quickly he gets off the line here. Tries to go around the outside of the... Oh, there goes Ali Moonair off there. Redmore tapped him. I'm not entirely sure where that'll be looked at. Here's um, Glazebrook through the whole incident. So, yeah, he's in P8 at the time of this. And, yeah, Redmore just seems to catch um, Moonair there. I'm not sure, as I said, whether the stewards are going to look, look at that. But Redmore did seem to get a flying start in that poor senior. And I don't know whether his teammate fared any better, but um, he does seem to have got the better start there. And, oh, Titani there with his classic Australian internet, you know, as the Australians have internet, usually connection problems happen. But, oh, a bit of argy-bargy between the two of them. And then Titani, well, Titani tries to hold Glazebrook off here, but then goes off again, as we saw earlier. And Ollie's like, well, thanks very much, mate. Yeah, he didn't actually tap him. So, clearly on Titani's screen, he did. So, no investigations there at all. And now we're running on board with Matthew Redmore. He's defending Ollie Glazebrook for fourth position. And just to confirm, Redmore and Ali Mooney's incident has been under investigation. And he's gone well over the curb there. And now Glazebrook and Bobby Hunter have managed to get past him. Fantastic stuff. Down inside into this corner. Oh, contact between Bob and Ollie. And now Redmore's up into fifth position. But he's gone too deep at the third to last corner. And Glazebrook gets him back. What on earth happened there? Well, I think the whole thing was probably started by um, Hunter because they, well, he ran um, Glazebrook off the road. He has a replay of that. You see, he just goes too wide, runs Glazebrook off. Glazebrook narrowly avoids Redmore. And Redmore goes off at the next corner. He has to tiny through the whole incident. But I think that was clear I cut 2B Hunter. Yeah, definitely. Now we're running on board with Joseph Willows. He's on the back of James' head. And now he's going to have a look at James now for the position. And now down into the chicane. Has he got him? Yes, he has. Up into second position. But he's compromised his exit for the chicane. Can James Head get him back? And he has. So Josie Wallace is going to have to work hard to get that position back. 
it's early days yet, but this but anything happens in Grand Prix racing, and it usually does. And now Glazebrook here in fifth position, and Bobby Hunter, did he? Oh, I thought he made a mistake there through that corner. And that Bobby Hunter's gone a little deep through there. And oh, he's getting pushed a little bit there. He had to take avoiding action, but it's still side by side. Great racing for the pair of them right now. Yep, indeed. As we saw, Glazebrook gets shoved into the pit lane. DRS and Able Cosmic lap three now, and Matt, look at that, Matt Orange. Fastest lap of the race now with a 128.2. As we go on board with Redmore behind them in the fourth end, you're having a brilliant show today. And he's chasing a lot of them. Going to select Prime Street next pit stop, as I assume a lot of people will, because you have to use both tyre compounds in a 20% race. And oh, Hunter's off again! So there uh, you go. Uh, Redmore's Redmore. up into fifth position. Fantastic stuff. And now he's on pursuit of the Williams of Ollie Glazebrook now. Can he get the fourth position off the Williams? But Bobby Hunt is not giving up a fight that easily. Look how close he was on the back of the Williams there. Can he get the position off him through this right, this fast right-hander now? Down the straight. Can he get him in? He's locked up. He's locked up. He's... Ooh. Oh, dearie me. What happened there? Well, Glazebrook came into the corner there. Yeah, he got around, but Glazebrook managed to hold it. Redmore very kindly waits behind for Glazebrook to get back ahead again. Tatani, ooh, Tatani hits a nearly steel ball out there and causes himself a damage. But um, Redmore now in the fourth senior having another go at Glazebrook. Ooh, more argy bargy there. Oh, and then, yep, now Hunter hits them as well. So all three of them. Calm down, ladies. You're having a bit of a go there, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, definitely. DOS from Matthew Redmore now. Can he get Glazebrook down the straight? And um, he looks like Glazebrook's trying down a little bit. And Redmore's got him up to fourth position, surely. And no lag. Lag there. So, I don't think that's what Renmore wanted there. Definitely now, Hunter's going to try and have a look. Fourth, fifth position off the Force India. Can the Red Bull get the Mercedes powered Force India? He tries he's on to go down the outside there, but he doesn't quite make it. No, not quite. He's, he's on the inside of that next corner, but he just can't seem to get the job done. And Redmore keeps the position, but now he's gone a little deep. Can Redmore get him back down into this corner? Side by side go the pair of them. And ooh, a little bit of a squeeze, but kindly done. Clean driving for the pair of them. And now Bobby Hunter tucked up behind in the Red Bull. Can he get the force in here of Red Bull? Into the oh, no! Oh, he shoved him off. I, that maybe have to be an investigation as Walmsley goes straight on. That was probably let Orange through in to be laughed draw. They know didn't want to cause any problems. As here comes uh, Joe Swirlos. And oh, there is Walmsley. And he's had a bit of a collision with the Williams and James out there. So that's, not, yep. And we've got some more investigations here. Glazebrook Hunter and Redmore Hunter. They're both being linked to the same dive bomb incident. So Hunter seems to be wanting to dive bomb people. And Ali Willis crashed it. The McLaren has crashed it. Matt Orange's teammate has crashed it. So will the safety car come out? Now, I'd be surprised if it didn't because, well, it usually does. To be honest, and oh, oh no, God, that's not going very well, is it, Bobby? You've taken him off now as well. And then, yeah, we got on the first no, but yellow flags, no, we're taking, you know, the usual. And well, now, Connor Smith and Red Bull, we are in bond with. So, yeah, double yellows usually means a pretty serious incident's taking place. So, Glazebrew Hunter, yep, that's been investigated as well. Kel Surprise, you know, that was always going to be investigated because, well, look, there'll be a pretty serious collision, and Connor and Red Bull. Having another bash in. There is the safety car now. So there you go. Safety car out on track now. So. No overtaking. Of course, no overtaking as well. And Redmore just about got got the position before he uh, had the chance. And, Red, and Hunter's gone off and lag. Lag. That's lifted Glazebrook up into fourth position. And now we're on board with Matt Orange. And he's coming into the pits. Yep, into the pits comes the race leader. And, well, Joseph Willows has to respond, doesn't he? He's on the softer tyre too. So... They're both coming in. They're going to switch to the primes. Down the lead mix, as you do under a safety car. Let's just have a look at Matt Orange's pit stop here. See if the McLaren boys can get his job done. Yep, 3.7 seconds. So, not bad. But can Mercedes do better? Changing the tyres there. All you're allowed to do in a pit stop. And it's 3.8 seconds. So, Mercedes are slower. Yeah, definitely. And now we're running, boy. Redmore's straight on. Goes Colin Welsh. And Redmore's goes up to sixth position now. And into the pits come Glazebrook. Glazebrook, of course. Driving for Williams. See if the Williams can get team get the fastest pit stop of the day. Going on the prime tyres. As well, everyone who's on the options will do. Some people will be on the primes and they probably won't pit. So let's see what Mercedes can do. Well, the Mercedes powered team. Williams, yep. New front wing for Glazebrook. So that's going to be a slow stop. 6.3 seconds. Quite slow when you consider the front wing, though. Not that slow at all, really. It's, well, look at this. We've got Redmore and Hunter in now for those teams. I didn't quite catch what was on the screen there. Sorry for my incompetence. But an entire change here. And that's three point... 
I can't quite make that out because that's an eight. That looks like an eight to me. Three point eight seconds. Four senior, not the best pit crew so far today. Then. Well, Mercedes did the same time. It looked like, and out of the pit lane he goes. He rejoins in seventh position, and into the pits comes Matthew Tatani now. And oh no, he's been held up by Waze Cuba. The and that has gone not ready for him. That has gone catastrophically wrong because it's going to cost him time. You have three point nine seconds, so that hasn't gone well his way at all. Yeah, definitely. Now it's the safety car coming in, and James had stayed out. Interesting. That's that was... gonna that's gonna cost him the podium because he's coming in. Yeah, that has not gone well for him. Now, if he's on the options, that's, yeah, it's the only reason he would come in. But trying to extend the tyre life, maybe. Trying to go on the options for long second stint. I'm not sure what he's doing, but it's costing big time. There's Josh Anderson in fifth. I haven't seen much of him this race. But P5 in the Force India, not looking bad. Yeah, definitely. Lance lifted Glazebrook up into fifth position. That's going to lift, yeah, surely. Redmore up into sixth position now. And um, adjust of the camera there from Redmore. Safety car coming in. Is that Matt Orange doing a little Jensen button there? It's actually, the favorite, it's actually his favourite his favorite driver in Formula 1. Now he's on the gas again. And, we got, and uh, we've got a bit of a slowdown here. Oh, that's Wormsley in 13th who's already been lapped. So he's slowing the field down. And that is, gonna, that is not going to go. That is going to anger some drivers on the track there. I hope Wamsley, yep, Wamsley coming into the pits now, but that has dropped fourth, fifth, and sixth backwards. Miles back of the leaders. I don't know what Wamsley was thinking there. He should have kept up. Yeah, definitely. Now, Glazebrook's on the inside of Anderson. He wants to get his foot down now because he wants to chase for a podium, and he's got him up into fourth position. Now, can Redmore, Anderson's teammate, get past him now? There was a bit of contact between the two teammates, but nothing done now. Redmore going up into mix three. He means business. He does mean business. Anderson will mean mix three as well. Both will be, ooh, Red Jams catches the grass there. Gets all four wheels over. Oh, goes a bit wide, maybe. And, yep, Anderson down into six now. Red Jams into fifth place. And, well, Josh Anderson's not the sort of guy who will fight his own teammate for position if he knows that his teammate's going to get the better position overall. He'll back off. He'll let him through. And he's not going to cause any major incidents. And now Red Jams, well, he's used mix three. He's used it when he needs to do. Goes back into stand mix. Sorry about that. But, yep, back into standard mix two. And Titani, Anderson down to 12th now. So he must have gone off. He must have done, or oh, oh, he's coming to the pits, I don't know. But now we're looking at Matthew Tatani, and, and now Jake Walmsley's retired. Jake Walmsley is now retired, and Conan up to back up to nine. I don't know if that's actually Conan. I don't know if that's an AI car, because I don't know if Conan's actually higher up there. But we'll have to see. We don't know if that's the real Conan or what. And now Tatani, Danny inside, into that right left chicane, and he's home Grand Prix, and he's got him. Up into ninth position goes Tatani in the Ferrari. And now Hunter's got a problem. Hunter is disconnected. Yeah, that's not going to be beneficial to him because of the amount of incidents he's being involved in because any penalties he'll have to carry over to the next race. Yeah, definitely. Now riding on board with Glazebrook now through that left right chicken. He's getting a loose. He's got loose. And now Redmore can capitalize and he's got Whoa, him. Oh, what a move from Redmore. Very opportunistic. Up into fourth position goes Matthew Redmore now. Now can he get the podium? And now down the straight they go. And uh, I believe Connor Smith is actually in the pits because he's good at stretching his tyres. And Redmore's now on the podium. Yeah. And now Conan Welsh is out. Yep, double yellow's out, but Welsh is out indeed. So that's not, that's not good news for him either. We had a couple of disconnections so far then. Glazebrook head now. Fourth and fifth place coming into the fast right, left. And well, here we go. We're going to see how this goes. Oh, oh. That's not gone at all well, has it? You've taken your own teammate out as there's been an incident between the two of them. Glazebrook trying to steer out of it, but James said. Going right, that's going to promote Moron in fourth place in the Mercedes. And that, well, of course, under investigation, you've broken the golden rule there, haven't you, lads? Yeah, rule one, never hit your teammate. And, oh, contact. Contact between Connor Smith and Matthew Titani. Uh, uh, was that, that, was is... that Australian lag or what? Yes, it was lag, so no investigation. That's, um, that's affected Titani, though, quite badly. So here comes Matt Orange and, well, what can we say, ladies and gents? McLaren are back on top of the game once more as Matt Orange wins in Australia. Well done, lad. Matt Orange wins the Australian Grand Prix. Joseph Willis crossed the line second. He had a little bit of issue with his capture card. But Matthew Redmore in the Force India, he's going to cross the line in third position. What a drive. BJ Malia will be very pleased with that indeed. Uh -oh. oh, not again. The antics don't stop there, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, James. Oh, no. Connor hit him. Connor Smith hit him. I don't know whether James had swerved to him or what. But that has cost 
James had sixth position, and now that's under investigation. Tatani is going to cross the line in eighth position. So after a, a cracking race here in Australia, here is the results then. So it's Matt Orange who won the race in the McLaren with Jersey Willow second, Matthew Renmore third, Michael Moran in fourth position with Ollie Gleesbrook fifth, Connor Smith sixth, and then James had seventh, Matthew Tatani eighth, Waze Cooper ninth, and Joshua Anderson rounding out the top ten in the other Force India. So double points for Force India. In the Drivers' Championship, it's the same as the result. Matt Orange takes the early lead in the championship with 25 points, with Joseph Willow second on 18, third Redmore with 15, fourth Moron on 12, fifth is Ollie Gleesbrook on 10 points, with Connor Smith sixth with on eight points, James Head seventh on on six points, and then it's um Matthew Tatani eighth on four points, Waze Cuba ninth on two points, and Joshua Anderson tenth on one point. In the Constructors' Championship, it's a little bit different because that's where things spice up. Mercedes actually take the early lead in the Constructors' Championship with McLaren second, Force India a third, even though they're tied with Williams. But because Matthew Redmore got that podium today, they are actually third with Williams fourth, Red Bull fifth, Ferrari sixth. Both of those teams have got to be disappointed. They've got to forget this weekend. And Lotus and Toro Rosso are let to get off the scoring board. So let's get back to the studio. So what a fantastic race we had there. Matt Orange taking the win. Joseph Willows second. And Matthew Redmore in the Force India in third position. What a great race for Matthew Redmore. Yeah, he had a brilliant race. I mean, he's shown how good he is in the likes of IF3C uh, last season. And now he's coming up to here to IF1C and he's just said, right, I'm going to stick it to the big boys. He has, definitely. Um, he had a good scrap with Ollie Glazebrook, definitely. Um, and it ended with Matthew Redmore getting the place after Ollie Glazebrook made uh, quite a twitch, which dropped him back. Yeah, that was unfortunate from him as well. And combined with the poor qualifying position he got, maybe this race will be a race to forget for him, but he still finished quite well. Exactly, and even despite there being a contact between the two teammates. Yeah, of course, contact between teammates is the last thing they're going to want. Of course, they'll have to sort that out before the next round, but made for some interesting viewing. Exactly. Now, there's been a little bit of a discussion about Jake Walmsley and what he did in the safety car, wasn't there? Yes, um, there has been a bit of an outcry regarding that from the driver. Several drivers were reported to be not very happy with that. Um, it did stem from the fact that he was lapped at the time, and well... He slowed down a bit, and that slowed everyone else down. So a lot of drivers weren't happy with the way he conducted that. Yeah, and just to let you know, the stewards are still investigating it, but they will let us know after the uh, the uh, the press conference is done. So we'll let you know on what the decision is with Jake Walmsley and with a couple of other incidents that's been going on in the race uh, after the press conference uh, uh, situation. So uh, speaking of which, we can now go over to the press conference and speak with the top three. So, Matt, great race, great performance. Uh, didn't get pole position, but you definitely uh, showed your race pace beating Willows. Uh, how do you think it went? Um, I think it went quite well, really. I was quite surprised at Joe's pace in qualifying. I mean, getting pole. I mean, I wasn't really expecting that, if I'm honest, but I managed to get him into turn one, and the race went quite well from there on, really. Uh, until the safety car, I had quite a big lead. And there was a bit of confusion at the safety car between Jake and then that held everyone up, which helped me as well. But after the safety car, Joe kept on to me, but I just managed to fend him off. And it was quite a good race, to be honest, for me. I mean, it was a good way to start the season, I guess. Obviously, when you uh, were Drew McLaren in the draw, you must have thought it would be a difficult season. But seemingly, you've just taken to it like a duck to water. I know, I mean, I'm quite shocked at the pace, to be honest. I mean, it's like the fourth or fifth fastest car. And to be fine with the Mercedes and the Williams, I'm quite happy, to to be honest. I mean, and sometimes beating them. So, yeah, I'm really happy about it, really. I'm going to take Most... a random guess here that your uh, your championship goal is for a driver's championship. But do you think you could get the uh, constructors with Ali? Uh, yeah, well, I guess we could. I mean, me and, me and Ali work well as a team. We're both reasonably quick drivers. And we we haven't got any bad blood between us, so we won't run into each other on purpose or anything. And we've both got pace, so it will be good fighting with him. Who do you see as your biggest championship rival for this season? Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, I I see Joe being a threat, actually, in the Mercedes. I mean, because the Mercedes are really powerful, but... I, I don't really have a specific rival. I get Ali because he's my teammate, so he's obviously my rival. I mean, I need to beat him. 
Uh, and I guess that both of the Williams drivers as well, they're both quick. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's my main rivals. Thanks for your time, Matt. We're going to move on to uh, Joseph Willows now, the pole sister. An incredible qualifying session from Willows. I don't think anybody expected it. Smashing the time, just showing he has got pace. But Joe, I, when I looked at it, I just thought the most important thing for that Mercedes team is you need to beat your teammate. And I think you've easily shown us that you're a championship rival. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was a bit surprised about Michael's pace, to be honest. Uh, he didn't have a good weekend. But, uh, oh, well, at least I could salvage something for the team. Um I'm a, second place is good, but I felt I could have won that race, to be honest. Getting pole, I wasn't expecting it, and I uh, thought I'd defend Matt at the start, but his start was just brilliant. He managed to get me down to turn one, and then Head did at the turn three, but I managed to keep up with Head. I had an opportunity at him around lap two. I uh, got him, but then I ruined my entrance and exit through that left-right chicane, and then I had to stay behind him for a bit, and then the safety car came out because I believe Ali crashed, and um, that really brought me back into play. So I decided to come into the pits to to ditch the option tyres. And uh, for some reason, James stayed out for some reason. And I thought, if Matt's going in the pits, I've got a chance to win. And he was. So came out uh, not being held up at all. And then James went in the next lap in the pits, which cost him time. So then my aim really was to get the win. And um, the first two laps after the safety car, I managed to keep up with Matt. But I, was, I just got in his hot turbine air and then the understeer kicked in and then I I lost time, so I thought, you know what, settle for second because I've got a big gap behind me. And uh, yeah, second's good, but uh, I felt I could have won today. And uh, hopefully, we'll get it in Bahrain for sure. It was a good performance, you can't deny that. But, you know, it was very disappointing that you went from first to second. It's still some solid points, and Matt obviously being a big ch championship favourite. But I have to ask, what is your goal for this season? Well, uh, to win the championship, obviously. I mean, I have the best car with me. Um, the Mercedes is considered to be the fastest, um, but judging that, the McLarens and the Williamses could be a threat as well. But my aim is to win the championship and um, obviously to beat my teammate, of course. So, yeah. Thanks, Joe. Uh, obviously, a very Mercedes-dominant podium. And when you would see a Mercedes, you would expect over Michael Moron to be on there, maybe James Head in the, in the Williams. But it was actually Matthew Redmore in the Force India pulling out a great performance in a car that really shouldn't be there, getting third position. It must have been a great race, Matt. Yeah, yeah, it was a really great race. Um, I was surprised in uh, qualifying to uh, finish that high up in the qualifying results. But... um. Yeah, it was good qualifying. So um, at the start, it was a very hectic start. I got a lot of wheel spin. Um, at the start, I, made, I took out Ali and I couldn't really do anything. Um, he pushed me out wide. I don't know. I think that's still under investigation. So, uh, yeah, I was surprised to be keeping up. And um, James James had got um, Joe at the uh, second corner, third corner. I don't know if I lost track. Um, yeah, he... Uh, Kind of took him out a bit, I think, and then I tried to capitalise on his mistake and uh, just the pure speed of that Mercedes. I couldn't get him at all, and then um, nothing much really happened after that. And then um, the ally Ali crashed, and I, uh, yeah, safety car. So I went in, trying to get the undercut, trying to catch up on the primes in the pits. And the Force India pit crew was quite quick. Yeah, I was quite happy with that. Um, came out, and uh, Jake was. Um, in the Toro Rosso, I think he's got a penalty for that. So, uh, yeah, he went to the pitch. We got held up and five seconds was lost there. So if one for those, his mistake there, I would have got a good result, really. And nothing much after really happened to that. So I'm happy with my third place on the podium. Well, the thing is, when you look at uh, look at uh, Willows and Willows, Orange, you know they've got you know, they've got they've got cars that can be challenging uh, challenging for the championship. You, on the other hand, you know you've got you know, the force in there. So, what is your championship goal? Is it to be getting consistent yeah, points, or maybe points, even break maybe a constructors' break, run? Run. Um, my goal will be at least to be third in the table and uh, try to get Force India to uh, at least challenge with Williams. Really, I think. We've got a good chance of beating Williams because we're quite equal paced. They had a bit of a run, as you know. They're not really happy at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I think once they get on form, they will be quite challenging to beat. And, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Thanks, guys. Guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
interesting interviews there. And now we have the official incidents that came through. So we're going to start off with the dive bomb incidents that Bobby Hunter caused with both Ollie Glazebrook and Matthew Redmore. Uh, it was received to be a warning for his actions on the ladder, um, which is kind of understandable considering that he did something else in the race as well. Yeah, of course. And that happened to be um, the incident with Ollie, Gra- Ollie Glazebrook at the last corner. And combined with that, he received a warning, but he's also been given a qualifying ban, so he won't be taking part in the qualifying session of the next race. Yeah, just like Milton just said, uh, he has received a qualifying ban for spinning out Ollie Glazebrook at the last corner on lap five, I believe it was, before the safety car came out, which is kind of weird. Bobby claimed that uh, he... that. Ollie didn't give him enough room as he was on the outside. But looking at the footage, Bobby was only on only side by side with his rear wing. So how does he believe? How is he expecting Ollie to see him? Do you think? I'm not. In a, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it was just a heat of the moment thing. I don't know. But he's got a qualifying ban for the next race, so that might affect him. I hope he learns from his actions. Now moving on again, Glazebrook's been involved in somewhere else. I can't believe how many things he got involved with. Uh, but it was the incident between him and his teammate James Head. The stewards awarded that to be just a racing incident as it was shown that uh, Glazebrook suffered from oversteer, which uh, which ruined his, which compromised his line, and James Head just simply just had nowhere to go. So, fair penalty, do you believe? Well, Pretty much, yeah. I don't think there's much that could have been done in that case. You know, if you get oversteer, you get oversteer, so... Yeah, definitely. And uh, I think there's what two more... Jake Walmsley has received a qualifying ban for holding up the pack after the safety car restart, and he even admitted it himself that he would prefer to have a qualifying ban. So, a fair penalty, do you think? Well, he did something, you know, getting a qualifying ban straight up there on the ladder. It was pretty serious what he did, and he could have compromised the race of others, so quite fair, to be honest. And there is one more incident, of course, that we need to discuss, and that would be the incident at the start between Ali Munir and Matthew Redmore. Now, that the stewards rules that that was Redmore's fault and they gave him a warning on our ladder. So what basically that means, he's been given a reprimand. If he does it again, he goes up the next step, as you probably know. Yes. Although there's two ladders, really. One for serious incidents like we saw with Jake Walmsley earlier on today and other and the other one's just basically like for minor incidents but can still be caused by another driver. Um, any reactions from that race at all, do you believe? Well, it was a fascinating race, and if the rest of the season's like this, I think I'll bloody well have a heart attack before it finishes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, next one's in Bahrain. Um, any last words, do you believe? Yeah, Bahrain, desert race, at night, in Ruston Combo, could see some surprises. Yeah, definitely. And before we go, do you believe that there's anyone on there uh, from their finishing positions? Do you believe anyone on there should forget their weekend today? I think there's a couple of people who want to forget this weekend and move on. Yeah, of course, there will be a couple of people that just want to get on with it, you know, get on to the next race. Most notably, the people have got qualifying bans as well. So, you know, there'll be, there's a, there'll be a couple of people. But aside from that, I think a lot of people will come out high. A lot of people will come out wishing they hadn't even bothered. Yeah, exactly. I think the the people who probably want to forget their weekend is probably the likes of Alamune and Bobby Hunter and uh, Ollie Glees. But they, their races just went downhill. Even their qualifying didn't go down well oh Ali's did but he went after the uh, incident he had at the start he just went and then he crashed later on in the race which brought out the safety car um looking forward to Bahrain definitely looking forward to Bahrain I think we could see as I said a couple of surprises there and well there'll be a couple of questions going in as well won't there can Matt Orange continue his dominance will we see anyone else rise to glory who knows who knows exactly well we'll be finding out in the next week because we'll be off to Bahrain for the next round at Sakia in Bahrain. But for me and Milton, thank you for watching, and we will see you in Bahrain. Take care. Goodbye.